Would you like to learn how to build a rocket from plans? That's what I'm going to cover in this video, right after this short announcement. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. In this video, I want to start building a rocket from plans, which means that you're not going to get a kit with all the parts in it. Now, we released a free plan book, and you can get this when you subscribe to our free newsletter and you get announcements that there's new videos like this one that you're watching here. Um, there's 25 different plans in here, like this one here. This is the Orion. Uh, but I want to show you how to build one. So if you've never built from plans before, this will be your first opportunity. Now the rocket that I'm building is called the Vipox, and you'll find this on page 77 of the plan book. So go ahead and print out the pages that you want to build. Um, and I've got an extra sheet here, which is my fin plans, because that's usually where I start. I start with the fins. Let me get this book out of the way here. Okay, so I've printed out the plans, and these are full size, but go ahead and double check to make sure your printer printed them at the correct size. So like this sheet right here says it's three inches wide by seven inches long. So when you print it out, make sure that it's seven inches long and three inches wide. So that's good. Uh, next, we're gonna cut this out. Now these are already laid out so that the grain of the wood is in the right direction. So if you lay it onto the wood like this, all the grain is in the right direction so that your fins are strong. That's important, uh, having the wood grain in the right direction. Now when I cut these out, I usually cut out inside the line. It's not important that you actually have the line on there. You just want to be inside. Okay, so now I have my fence cut out, or my, my plans cut out, and I gotta transfer these to the wood so that I can cut them out. And what I need to do is basically attach them to the wood, and then I'm gonna cut right through the paper. That's the easiest way to do it, and to be most accurate. Now to transfer them to the wood, um, what I like to do is to use a spray adhesive. Now this is a low-tack adhesive. Um, it's called Spray Mount. You can also get an Elmage brand. Um, but do this outdoors because this is really nasty stuff to breathe. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to spray the back side. Kind of, kind of stuck. And then just let it dry just a little bit. So give this about 30 seconds to dry. Again, do this outdoors. It stinks really bad. Um, and when it lands on something, it's gonna leave a sticky residue that you can't get off. So do this outside and you'll save yourself a lot of troubles. Um, then I wanna take this and I wanna just lay it onto the wood like that. Just make sure that none of the edges go over the wood. Press it down. And you can see that I'm going to have a lot of excess here, so I'm just going to cut that off. I'm just going to save some wood so that I have lots of wood left over for my next project. See, I can, I can lay this over. See, this is scrap right here, and if I lay that right there, I can get more pieces on the wood, and I have lots of excess over here on this side. So now it's it's time to start cutting it out. And for that, I use a sharp hobby knife and a ruler. And you should wear your safety glasses when doing this because you don't want to snap off a blade. Um, these are also my cheater glasses because I'm getting old. Um, so just lay it on top of the part and then find the line and just cut across. OK, 
Okay, and I like to save wood, so I'm going to just going to cut across here and get rid of this excess piece. And when you're going across the grain, this is the grain, is these lines in the wood. Uh, when you're going across the grain, it's a little bit harder, so you'll have to use several passes. Okay, and I'm going to do this one here, and it will separate this whole piece. Now, when I put this the, on top of the wood, what I'll do is I'll put my point right here, and I'm going to bring the ruler up against it, and then I can use that as a pivot. That way I can just slide it over to, until I see the line. And then when I, before I cut, I'm going to spread out my fingers really wide. This allows the ruler to stabilize so that it doesn't shift around on me. Um, and I also want to keep my fingers away from the blade because it, blades are really sharp. You can see the way I'm holding it kind of like a pencil and just drawing it across. And you can feel it going through the wood. And then when you get all the way through, it'll snap. You'll hear it pop. And then it will come free. And I got a nice sharp edge right there. And then that piece also came off. And I'm going to cut here right through these. Again, I'll put my uh, point right there and then pivot on that to get to the line, spread out my fingers, and then draw it across. Okay, and then when you're done, because it's a low tack adhesive, this piece of paper just peels right up. So there's one of my fins, and I'm going to go ahead and cut out all the other fins at this time, and then I'll be right back. At this point, all my fins have been cut out, and I need to glue them together per the plans. Now, if you look at these, um, the fins are going to, one end is going to be glued like this to give a, um, a longer fin. Uh, but if you look closely, I got a little dog leg here, so it goes straight and then it curves that way. What I need to do is to flip this one over like this so that this edge is straight. So if you take a ruler and you lay it up against a ruler, it's nice and straight like that. That's the way that these are going to get glued together. Um, so for this, I'm going to need wood glue. And I'm going to need a piece of plastic. And I'm going to lay the plastic down on my surface because I don't want to get any glue on the surface. And I'm just going to take them and then just put a little bit of glue on this, lead, uh, this edge here. Now that's probably way too much glue, so I'm going to take probably 80% off. So I have some paper towels handy. And then I want to glue them together like this and then allow them to dry. So again, I want to just double check, make sure it's nice and straight. And then we're going to make sure that it's not bowed anyway. And then we're just going to, oops, it slid apart. Be careful when moving them around. So that I can do the next one.
Okay, so now my fins have been glued up and I'm going to allow these time to dry. And while I'm doing that, we can start the next part, which is either cutting the tubes to length or we can start building the engine mount. Now I like to build the engine mount because, again, there's going to be a lot of glue that it has to dry. So the engine mount um, is the engine tube, the engine hook, two centering rings. This is the engine block inside. And we're also going to need our Kevlar shock cord. So I start by, we need to cut a notch here for the engine hook to go into the tube. Um, I like to cut it one half inch from one end. So if I take pencil here, and I lay up the pencil up against it, and I mark it one half inch from an end, like that, and then just take the hobby knife and just plunge it right in. Just needs to be big enough for that little hook on the front of the engine mount like that and just push it right through. Uh, then we're going to take an engine ring, slide it over, and this can be kind of tight, and we're going to glue that ring approximately one half inch from the other end. So I'm eyeballing this about one half inch. I'm going to mark it. It's not too critical exactly where it goes. Um, it just needs to go a little bit further away so that you can bend this hook up so you can slide the engine inside of it later when you're ready to launch. So as long as you can bend it up high enough to slide the engine in and out, that's going to be good. Now if you put it too far forward or too far to the end of the tube, now getting the engine in is very difficult. So that's why we put it up a little bit from the end of the tube. So when you get it into the right spot, I'm going to put some glue around the outside. and then just slide the engine, that ring, right into it. And it went a little bit too far, but that's okay. And then I was going to smooth out that glue there. Any glue on the outside of the ring, wipe that off, because you get a lump on that ring, it's not going to want to go into the body tube of the rocket. Okay. And I'm going to take this engine block, and we're going to glue it up against that little tang that went through the tube. Um, and that prevents the engine from sliding forward. And just smearing the glue around. And I push that in, and just use a, an engine to just to push it in nice and straight. And you'll you'll know when you're right up against the uh, engine engine hook. And then if you look on this side, if there's a big glob of glue that got pushed forward, go ahead and wipe that out. Uh, you can use a Q-tip or you can use um, a dowel. This, you can use the back end of your hobby knife and just feel around in there and just smooth out any glue. Okay, so that's going good so far. And we're going to take our engine or our shock cord like here and we're going to wrap it around this tube and I like to use a slip knot so to make a slip knot um, you make a loop here you come out you go around like it's like it's going to be just an overhand knot like that and then you bring the loose end around the shock cord and you pass it back through the hole that you made And then you pull it tight, and now this should be a slip knot, so I can slide it down tight against the tube, like that. Now this ring has to go over the top of that hook, uh, not the top of the hook, top of the uh, shock cord. So I need to cut that notch, so I'm just going to take my knife, and I'm going to cut a, a little V-notch into the inside of the 
um, centering ring. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm going to take the shock cord, pass it through there, put it into the notch like that, and then slide it over the front end of the tube. And I can pull it tight up against the centering ring like that. Now this ring is going to get glued to the front of the tube. that. Wipe off any excess glue. And pull that tight and then I'm going to put glue around this side to create a fillet. And this piece of excess shock cord will glue that down too. And I might as well put a fillet of glue around this ring. Again, I just smooth it out, take off any excess, any on the green ring on the surface, wipe that down. And I'm going to take, smooth out that glue as well. And as I smooth it around, I'm pushing the shock cord down against it like that. So I'm going to set this aside and allow that glue to dry.